All right, episode uh, 82, nailed it, um, on a, su- su- what is it, Sunday today? Yeah, woo, all over the place. Sunday night, uh, <laughs> Illinois played two days ago. They also played tomorrow. Big win over Rutgers, big win. Um, before we get into it, I wish StreamYard would make for a, a bit of a better transition between the 30-second countdown and the intro video. Like, just need to be a little bit smoother with that. Maybe it's something on my end, maybe it's not, I don't know. But uh, just my my comment for the early part of the podcast. I mean, we're pretty big streamers. Maybe if we just tell them, they'll, they'll get that, a change. I mean, we could make that happen. I mean, there's no <laughs> doubt. We, we could do something, uh, you know, of that nature, certainly. Um, yeah. You know, whatever. Uh, okay. Episode 82, Rutgers came in and uh, really didn't uh, put up any sort of fight at all. No. Uh, it was close for you know, what, 10 minutes, maybe 10 minutes of the game. I don't know. And then Illinois uh, just got hot. Um, Player of the game, your pog. I know you wrote some of them down, so uh, go ahead and uh, tell everybody out there. Definitely uh, Alfonso Plummer for okay. sure. Alfonso uh, Plummer, 20, 20 something points. So <laughs> yeah, twenty four points. He did do that. He did. He did shoot the ball well. He has been doing that lately. I'm going to go with Coleman Hawkins. Um, he had nine points, three rebounds, two assists, two blocks, three steals, um, and uh, it's not so much his offense. Uh, I I got to give him props for his defense against Ron Harper Jr. Uh, held him to five points. Uh, Harper. His only basket he made was a three on an offensive rebound. So uh, really not Hawkins' fault there, I guess. But uh, I thought it was interesting. Uh, Underwood, uh, after the game, talked about how, you know, Coleman Hawkins is playing better defense. And uh, Underwood's quote was that he told him that Harper goes to bed every night and pictures Hawkins in a pink tutu after – uh, what he did last last December, uh, putting up 28 points, nine rebounds, which I thought was a crazy, 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 crazy quote because Coleman Hawkins played five minutes that game. So uh, I don't know how that really, you know, had anything to do with Hawkins, him scoring all those points, but, you know, whatever. But uh, it seems like Coleman's been, you know, playing better defense. He was one of the question marks on his on the defensive end. And uh, I think Illinois is going to need him against Iowa. So uh, hopefully he can keep that up. I believe that Illinois uh, had their seventh new starting lineup. Uh, Hawkins, Kofi, Plummer, Williams, Frazier. So how many lineups did they have last season? I can't remember. I mean, I would guess like six. You want me to go back through every starting lineup last year? I feel like that would be something that could be done. Maybe maybe next time. Uh, I think, yeah, definitely. (laughs) Uh, Kofi had a good game, uh, you know, 13 points, uh, 15 rebounds, two assists. He had a couple, uh, I would call secondary assists, uh, where he'd kick it out and then another pass to a guy, uh, two, uh, blocks and he was five of six from the line. So he's almost to 70% from the free throw line this year, uh, 69.8 to be exact. So it seemed to me that he was he was looking to pass more than looking to score this game. In his interview after the game, he did mention something about I realized you know this is more of a, a about team wins than you know and playing as a team than you know getting my numbers. So good mentality. I would like to see him be a little bit more aggressive, not initially look for a shooter or somebody outside. But it's working. Illinois scoring. Um, I think that Illinois is going to have games where they're not making all those shots, not making all the threes, and he's going to have to be a little bit more aggressive. But um, I'm all right with it. I think that he didn't get. I think he only got the ball inside twice in like the first ten minutes. First one he bobbled, and the second one I believe he scored on. But uh, Illinois is having a hard time getting him the ball. It seems like, which has kind of always been a thing, is uh, struggling with an entry pass to him. And then when they do get it to him, it's usually down around his ankles, which I believe we talked about that a lot last year. Um, Just hopefully they can clean that up. I mean, you you hate to harp on a team that won by 30 or whatever they won by, but just some things you got to clean up a little bit. 
Uh, your guy Plummer, who you picked, uh, great pick for player of the game. Absolutely. Uh, 24 points, 8 of 15 shooting, 3 of 8 from 3. You know, 3, That's I guess that's good, right? 3 of 8. It, it doesn't look pretty, but that's that's high numbers, right? 3 of 8. Well, it's 3 of 11. Adam Miller's special was 3 of 11. Yeah, um, true. True. Yeah, I mean, you know, it, 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 it you know, it doesn't hurt that Rutgers is awful and they played no defense now. Yeah. Yeah. Like what Rutgers. the hell happened to that team? Rutgers was bad and I love I love the orange crush booing Mulcahy every time he touched the ball. Yeah, I, I, I like it, it too, but you know, <laughs> at the end of the day it's like could there be a worse player to care about, you know? Like, <laughs> right. Oh, he and, loves it. He loves that people that, you know, people are thinking about him. So, yeah, I mean, I, I definitely understand doing it considering, you know, last season, but um, yeah, I mean, that Rutgers is just, that's a team that nobody could coach right now. They're bad. I mean, they, they have nothing. I, the, I, Geo Baker being out doesn't even, Illinois would have won by 25 if Geo Baker played. Yeah. They don't play yeah. any defense, which is what Pico teams usually do is play defense. I think the fact that they're missing now, Miles Johnson went to UCLA, mm-hmm. Montez Mathis went to St. John's, and Jacob Young went to Oregon. Those three guys were literally like the complete key to their entire defense. Perimeter defense, Jacob Young, Montez Mathis, uh, post defense, Miles Johnson. Yeah, and that's a, I guess that's the two-headed monster that Illinois can be. I mean, this is the team that we expected this year was you know Kofi to be able to dominate the inside and have a bunch of shooters around him so if you're going to collapse on Kofi you know that you know you're there's shooters out there and they're going to knock down shots at least they have been um ever since the Cincinnati or you know Cincinnati game so um big thing about Plummer he's not missing free throws uh you tried to jinx it the other day oh um, please I proved that there is no jinx I proved that there can be no (laughs) jinx yeah uh, the most thing, the thing that I'm most impressed about with Plummer is even when guys are closing out on him, he does his head fake, takes two, three dribbles inside, and that shot's really good too. I mean, he's just he strokes the ball well. So, uh, Demonte, uh, did you like his aggress- aggressiveness? Um, I can't say I remember the game fully right now, but okay. um... well, he came down that one time and chucked it up before I, I'm saying you know five seconds into the shot clock made it and then he had another one that was really bad and then he had another one that was really bad um but i i don't mind him shooting i i love when he shoots when he's wide open but um he made well, two of four so i feel like he bad. was i feel like he was doing some of this stuff last season though too late yeah. in the season yeah he was doing this sure. kind of stuff trying to get more aggressive i think um, <clears throat> but you know i get with Plummer and kofi and Grandison, Grandison's been huge. I don't know how many points is he averaging now. Like forty. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but yeah, so so I don't know. Uh, he had six points, four rebounds, five assists. He's still distributing the ball really well. Um, a block and two steals. So Illinois had uh, how many steals? Eight steals this game. So their uh, defense was better. I don't know if it's. I mean, I believe it's just because Rutgers is that bad, but. Rutgers also has like no depth. Yeah. No experience depth either. That Miller kid. I mean, please. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Trent is uh, struggling shooting two of eight from three, two of 10 from the field, five rebounds, five assists, one steal. He's playing the guard really well. Um, so I think that as long as he just continues to, to be about, you know, running the, the offense and, yeah, I felt like Illinois cut really well. They moved really well without the ball. Um, hopefully they can carry that over to Iowa. Iowa's going to be a different beast. Uh, watching them play Purdue, their defense is, is a lot different than it used to be. So um, Underwood did say of Trent, um, Trent's hardly practicing. He's been very limited, so he's not been in the gym and getting much shots up, fighting through some shoulder and some knee. All he does is figure out how to guard the other team's best player and do what it takes to win. So uh, I don't think it matters. I mean, the I, the good thing about Plummer playing so well and shooting so well is that for it takes a lot of pressure off Frazier to be a scorer, you know? Um, and hopefully hopefully they can both get going together, and then Illinois is going to be scary good. So uh, 
off the bench, uh, Payne, Grandison, and Goody were kind of the three guys that played off the bench. I thought Payne had his best game uh, since coming to Illinois. Uh, didn't do really anything offensively, but he had seven rebounds. He had a really nice block against Mulcahy when he tried going to the lane. Uh, Grandison still solid off the bench now as he's coming off the bench. Doesn't have to be a starter, but 16 points, four rebounds. Uh, it seems if he gets an open look behind the arc, uh, there's a good chance it's going to go in. And he usually doesn't take very many bad sp- shots. He did take one in this game. His heat check shot was not very good. But uh, so far, Granison is is what I, I, I believe he's the biggest key to Illinois staying going and keeping this. Uh, you know, Plummer's going to get his shots up. Kofi's going to do what Kofi does. I think Grandison's kind of that third guy that, you know, you got to get 10, 15 points out of him. So, uh, Goody playing like a, like a veteran, I think not, not really looking like a freshman. Um, he had two threes, had two assists, uh, really liking his play. My biggest question is what happened to Melendez? (laughs) He starts the game before and then he plays garbage minutes this game. Is it just, Matchups? Does Underwood just, I mean, not care? I mean, you're up 30, and and the guy that started, the freshman that started the last game, literally plays the last four minutes. Well, I feel like we've learned that this is the kind of stuff that Underwood does at yeah. this point, and uh, I can't say that I'm surprised at all. Okay. All right. In terms of rotation, by the way, when Curbelo comes back, I feel like he has to come off the bench. Yeah, I agree. I feel like there's no way you could start him in the first game that he comes back. No, I don't think, and especially if it's, um, you know, if it's, if it's a confidence thing is why he's out or, you know, whatever's going on with him. I do, you know, if it's not a physical thing and it's more mental then yeah, I don't think that you can. And he played so well off the bench last year too. He kind of, you know, he talked about it last year, how, you know, I get to see the offense and what needs to be done and what I can do to help. And then he would come in and he would do those things, and that's when Illinois played better, I thought. So, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't think that you can start him. I feel like this might be the lineup for a while. I mean, maybe not get any changes as long as everybody's healthy. Um, uh, Hutcherson, yeah. I guess he's still a little ill or something. He didn't play much. Uh, he only played at the end. Maybe it's because of practice time and he hasn't really got back into it, but. Um, it seems like Illinois is kind of a eight man, you know, lineup right now with Payne and Grandison and Goody coming off the bench and the other guys just, you know, there. <laughs> I don't know. Just not, you know, we always talked about depth and I don't know if Illinois really has that depth. I don't, I, but that, of course, could be health reasons too. Um, so do you think Illinois played really good defense or you think Rutgers is just that bad? I'll say uh, 60% Rutgers is terrible, 40% defense. Okay. All right. I mean, they, they shut down Harper. Um, they didn't, of course, they didn't have Geo Baker. So, you know, I don't know. I I hope that it's Illinois' defense more than <laughs> Rutgers being bad because um, Illinois needs that. Um, I did, Underwood must be listening to us because I complain all the time about his out of bounds plays. And he literally ran an out of bounds play to get Grandison wide open at the hoop. You're welcome, Brad. Uh, anything else you need from us, just hit me up. So, uh, Illinois actually uh, did well handling the ball this game. Only 10 turnovers. They had six in the first six and a half minutes. So, um, and seven in the first half. So, only three in the second half. Uh, again, something they're going to need for Iowa because Iowa does not turn the ball over and they run that press, and Illinois is going to have to get break that and not cough up the ball a lot. Um, Underwood was asked about the team's toughness, if he thought they were there yet. Um, he said, quote, or, or he said, they asked, are they ever, or he said, quote, <laughs> are we ever going to be tough enough? Not in my world, but we're getting there. So, um, like, it, it was a 30-point win against a not so great Rutgers team. Illinois did what they had to do. They couldn't lose this game. You know, what do they say? A must win or can't lose. Um, they didn't, 
didn't do either. So, I mean, it could have could have been uh, could have been better. Yeah, they could have won by you know forty. That's what I would have preferred. Ninety one fifty one thirty five, but. You know, I think that we both had the game a heck of a lot closer than that. So, what do we have? Uh, I had 76-68. You had 68-63. So, Whew. apparently Yikes. we don't trust Illinois' scoring ability. <laughs> well, I thought that Rutgers would actually play some sort of defense. Yeah, true. Which they yeah. don't. Rutgers looked really, really bad. So, I mean, I will, I'll take 35-point wins all season, though. That's what my dad texted me. He said, man, this game's boring. I said, I'll take them all year. I mean, he lost. The Rutgers did lose to Lafayette, so they're not good. True. At all. Uh, True. They are a very bad basketball team. And uh, the Big Ten uh, right now makes no sense, which leads us to the fact that uh, Illinois plays Iowa tomorrow night. Uh, in Iowa, much like Wisconsin. Why didn't that change? Much like Minnesota. Mm -hmm. Much like multiple teams in the Big Ten look better than what they were expected to be preseason. So Iowa 7-1, uh, they just came off a game where they kept it close with Purdue. They lost by seven. They were uh, they, down big against They Purdue scored too, right? 44. They were down 13 at the half. They scored 44 points in the second half. Um, so, I mean, Iowa – All without was, their best player. <laughs> yeah, so Iowa once again is going to be a very interesting opponent, a different opponent, though. And the other thing is with this game is Iowa was 5 for 21 from three against Purdue. So you have to think they're going to be better in this game. They're at home yeah. too. That'll help them. I think uh, this yeah. is going to be another big challenge and Illinois has had their struggles at Iowa. So that's going yeah. to play a factor here. Um, yeah. I mean, you look at it, they, uh, Iowa really hasn't played a lot of people um, besides Virginia and Purdue, um, but they're averaging like 97 points a game or something. It helps when you're playing a bunch of teams. Yeah, I mean, when you score 106 against Longwood and 108 against Alabama State and 109 against Western Michigan, yeah. it'll skew the numbers a little bit. But uh, after the game, after the Rutgers game, uh, Underwood said that the first thing DeMonte and Trent talked about after the game was the fact that they haven't won in Iowa City since being here. Um, Illinois hasn't won there since February 18th, 2017. So, yep. Four years in the making. Um, and like I said before, Iowa doesn't turn the ball over. Uh, 8.4 turnovers uh, per game this season, which is fourth in the country. I think they had seven or nine against Purdue. Um, so, I, you know, Illinois is going to have to take care of the ball, and they're going to have to try to turn Iowa over a little bit. That, that press – I hope it doesn't give Illinois problems, but I feel like it might, especially yeah. with Curbelo out. So, um, the the good thing about Illinois is is they're quick, they like to run, um, and they can run. Uh, of course, they're not IO Illinois quick, but Kofi gets down the court, and when he doesn't get down the court, Brad's on his ass. So, yeah, I mean, uh, Iowa is first in turnover percentage in the country on offense, and they're 62nd on defense and forcing the turnovers. Illinois, 308 and 260 in those two categories. So Yeah, 260. I, that's why Illinois, and what, what was their Ken Palm or their Haas metrics third to start the season? They got to be like 40, 50 now. Overall defense. or defense? Yeah. They're 21st on Ken Palm and really? defense. Okay. Uh, on Haslametrics, I I can't imagine it's it's very good. Yeah. Um. I mean, overall on on Haslametrics, they're thirty seventh. Defensively, they're forty seventh. So. Yeah. yeah. It's, sounds like Keegan Murray is going to be back for this game. Uh, he was. Uh, Fran was asked about it today, and they had practice this afternoon and said, as long as he's good to go, he's going to play. So uh, sat out Purdue because he wanted to beat Illinois is what you know I hear. So sounds right. Do you, yeah. Do you think that Coleman Hawkins gets the honor of guarding him? Uh, honor? Excuse me. <laughs> you I know. mean, I don't. I don't. I, what do you call it? The task. Nope. You say honor. honor. You say honor as if he's like an All American player. Please. Uh, I mean, here's the thing. Iowa has a lot of size when he's playing. Mm -hmm. Like they're 
six nine six nine, and then he is uh, six eight. So that's three guys right there, and they have smaller guards though. So that's going to be matchups. This is his twin brother an inch taller than him? Apparently, I don't know. <laughs> right. We don't know. Uh, so their lineup projected wise, I would assume will be uh, Bohannon, who had twenty points against Purdue. We all know him, eighth year at Iowa, pretty much. Uh, you'll have Joe Toussaint, who was a much more prominent guy a couple seasons ago than last season, but he's still there, so they'll have him. And then this uh, Philip Rebraca fellow, who uh, I believe transferred from somewhere. Yeah, he transferred from uh, North Dakota. Okay, six nine two thirty from Serbia. He starts, doesn't play that much, but you know, uh, Patrick McCaffrey. So Fran's uh, nepotism continues, Oliver. and then uh, Keegan Murray. I'm mm-hmm. assuming will be the starting five. So we'll see. I mean, they play about, I would say, overall, probably nine guys, eight to nine yeah. guys. The other McCaffrey will come off the bench, and then. Keegan Murray's twin yeah, brother will come I'd off say the at least, I'd say 10, maybe. Well, this Euless. Uh, they got depth. Aaron Euless mm-hmm. will probably be in there somewhere. Yep. Uh, Tyler Euless's brother, who is an All-American SEC player of the year at Kentucky. And uh, Perkins plays a little bit, Tony Perkins. And uh, last game they had uh, this uh, Peyton Sanford fellow play, freshman from Iowa. So who knows? I mean – on paper, I would say Illinois is a better team. Paper doesn't matter in the Big Ten, clearly. Right. Uh, and, you know, Iowa's a team gives Illinois trouble. I know Illinois has owned them the last few matchups. <laughs> right. But yeah. Illinois was much better last season than they are this season. Yeah, this and point. and I feel like not them not having Garza, it, it helps them in the defensive game, first off, and then in the fact that, you don't have to rely on getting him the ball. I mean, I mean, just think if they they let Keegan Murray kind of do more than they did last year, Iowa would have been way better. Um, yeah, but it seems like he, you know, I think everybody had a back seat to Garza last year, and now now they get to sit in the front seat. So, yeah, Garza had to make sure he could pad his stats to win <laughs> Player of the Year, <laughs> right? That was his job. Uh, I mean, in terms of Ken Palm, Iowa's numbers look good, but I, it's hard to trust all these numbers considering who they've played. Right. And, uh, Illinois is number 18 overall in Ken Palm, there, and Iowa's number 21. Iowa's 79th defensive efficiency, so still not a very efficient defensive team. I think they look better, but the stats yeah. don't say that. Yep. What's but, uh, Do they have the Ken Palm score thing yet? Yeah, it's. Uh, I believe – let's see here. Probably pretty close. I like, by two. Okay. 78 76. So okay. it also has Illinois over Arizona by three. So keep that in mind. Wow. Arizona looked good today. Well, of course, I mean, they Oregon were playing State the Beavers. So, yeah. They were yeah. playing a one and eight Oregon State <laughs> squad. Yeah. I know. I agree. But they look good. Well, so. the rest of the Big Ten stinks, other than a few. I mean, Minnesota looks better than expected. Wisconsin does as well. Michigan's struggling. They did end up you know, running away from San Diego State yesterday, but uh, it's going to be interesting to see the Big Ten in the next few months. Yeah. So this is a big game to start, and then they'll get Arizona, St. Francis, PA, all those other random games. And then this the is like, really I start. saw somewhere this is their only away game uh, for like three weeks or something. I mean, it goes back into last month, but. Yeah, let's take a look at this here. Their next uh, road game is January 2nd against Minnesota. Yeah. They have uh, home home neutral site against uh, Mizzou and then Florida A&M. So also Illinois, by the way, 14 points over Missouri right now. So we'll Should see. be 40. Uh, so there's no spread on this game, right? I did not see one. I don't know. My guess would be like not one out, but Iowa minus three. You think? I would say yeah, two, one and a half, two, maybe. I don't think it's going to be much. Um, As of right now, ESPN has Iowa sixty point three percent chance. I saw that, and Fran Frischilla has a hundred percent. 
Yeah, because if Keegan's back, uh, automatic might as well not even go. I hope well. Underwood put that tweet up. Fran said. <laughs> so. I hope Underwood put that tweet up. I guess Fran's have to stick together because it's such a horrendous name. I guess. <laughs> so, I don't know. Uh, prediction. Yeah, um, I think Illinois either wins by 20 or, as I predicted, they lose by six. Um, Illinois 72, Iowa 78. I don't think Illinois is going to be able to go into Iowa. Uh, you know, their first home Big Ten game this year and get a win. I, I don't see it happening. Uh, I hope I'm wrong. I was wrong the last time I picked Illinois to lose. But Iowa, I just think that defense is going to the, – the way Illinois turns the ball over, that defense is going to kill Illinois. I'm yeah, well, you're a fake 20, fan. I'm guessing 20 turnovers by Illinois. Fake fan. 20 to 5. Illinois so wins. Over ratio. Okay, you can't just look at stats. It's a Big Ten game. And also, would you I be understand. turning over the ball very much against Alabama, A&M, and D3 well, schools? They only and, turned it over nine times against Purdue. Okay, here's the thing with that, though. Their average Purdue, is 8.4. Purdue wasn't trying in that game. Oh, Purdue's not good now is now what we're going No, with. they're good. They weren't trying, though. They still won. That <laughs> makes them even better. Uh, like I, I said, it's either Illinois by 20 or they lose by six, okay? No. If they don't no. win by 20, they lose by six. Here's the thing. <laughs> Iowa has veteran guards handling the basketball, okay? They have a much different lineup that allows them not – like Illinois turns the ball over a lot when it's either trying to get it to Kofi or Kofi dropping the ball. And I, Kofi has, has only had like one drop ball this year. Okay, but he still probably happy. should have caught. One. The rest mm-hmm. are down by his ankles. Have you ever been seven foot and tried to catch a ball at your ankles? I've not, not been, very easy no. to do. I, I, I hope that L- the my thing is how's this game going to be called? Is Kofi going to get you know a lot of a lot of calls like Drew Timmy seems to get, or is Kofi going to get beat up like he does every game and you know can't do anything? Well, Illinois is going to win seventy nine seventy eight, and uh, there you go, folks. Is that a game winner? Illinois or, wins. Or, yeah, how, how's this? How's uh, the win happen? It's going to be 78-77, and okay. uh, Plummer's going to sneak in, pitch it to Kofi. Kofi's going to dunk it or lay it up and in. Uh-huh. Ten seconds left. Iowa comes down. Uh, give it to Keegan Murray, who's apparently the next coming of uh, Larry Bird or whatever, <laughs> and he's going to miss, and then that's going to be that. Do you think after Kofi slams it, he yells, I own you to the fans? Because I would. I don't know if he has the same right that the other person that did that does. Uh, Why? Had. Uh, has Kofi been dominating Iowa for the last uh, decade plus? Uh, well, I mean, two years. That's enough. Did he dominate he them? can't do it for a decade plus. You can only play college basketball for four to eight years. Well, first of all, I mean, tell that to Jalen Coleman Lands. <laughs> like What's he, nine, ten? Um, let's see here. Okay. Kofi, 12 points, eight rebounds against Iowa, uh, 6.6 rebounds against Iowa, uh, 26 and eight. That's good. Nine. They don't have Garza. Yeah. He hasn't really dominated them. I mean, he had one really good game, which is the big 10. They haven't beat him. That's all. That's all it takes to dominate somebody. They lost to them that one game. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyways. Yeah. All right. Well, I think Illinois is going to win. You think they're going to lose your haters? There's so tickets. We can go to the game. Tickets are only 24 bucks. Apparently, Iowa fans aren't showing up. You couldn't pay me to go to Iowa. <laughs> yep. Sorry, Illinois. You know, you can thank me when Illinois wins because last time I picked them to lose, they won. So prove me wrong, boys. I hope you do. I think they will. So Illinois by 40. All right. That'll do it for us. <laughs> uh, episode 83 will be... Next week at some point. Yeah, we got a almost a week between games, so yeah, we'll figure, figure it, out. it out. We're almost to a hundred, so okay. See ya.